In the first two units of this course, we explored the dynamics of maps, systems that operate in discrete time. We're now moving to the dynamics of continuous time systems, what are called flows. And that means that we're going to be drawing pictures that look like this, rather than pictures that look like this. So space and time are going to now be continuous rather than discrete. Although we will be forced to do a little bit of discretization of time and space if our sensors or our data acquisition system has a finite sampling time. And instead of difference equations, like the logistic map, we'll be working with differential equations, like this one. I'll defer treatment of differential equations until a little bit later in this unit. Now all of the concepts that we discussed in the first two units, in the context of maps, also apply in flows. Continuous time dynamical systems, for example, also have state variables. In the logistic map, the x variable captured the whole state of the system, the fox to rabbit ratio, loosely speaking. Here's the double pendulum again. What do you think the state variables are here? Certainly the positions of the two bobs, say theta 2 and theta 1, that is the angle measured around this axis is theta 1, and the angle measured around this axis is theta 2. It's good, by the way, to measure these in radians. You could also do it in degrees, but that makes the math a real headache later on. And it's not trivial to measure the angle of this bottom one, if you think about it. Think about the engineering constraints. But positions alone don't capture the whole state. The pendulum could be at theta 1 equals theta 2 and not moving, or it could be at theta 1 equals theta 2 and it's moving. Those are different states. So we also need to measure the velocities, in particular the angular velocities measured in radians per second. So this is how fast the pendulum rotates around that joint. That would be omega 1. And how fast the pendulum rotates around this joint. I say that's omega 2. So a state of this system has four components. Theta 1, theta 2, omega 1, how fast it's doing this, and omega 2, which is how fast it's doing this. That is, values for each of the four state variables. Those four numbers are actually enough information to fully describe the system state. Other choices are also possible, by the way. You could also use velocity and acceleration instead of position and velocity, or you could use position and acceleration. That's a deeper topic. An initial condition is just a particular state. Say, theta 1 equals, I don't know, pi over 6. Theta 2 is 0. Notice that I'm measuring theta 2 relative to this bob. And omega 1 equals omega 2 equals 0. That means it's sitting still right there. A trajectory of the system is the progression of states that the dynamical system goes through. This is a continuous progression, not a discrete progression. This particular trajectory from that initial condition is going through a transient as it converges to an attractor. That attractor is a stable fixed point at theta 1 equals 0, theta 2 equals 0, omega 1 equals 0, and omega 2 equals 0. The initial condition that I used is in the basin of attraction of that fixed point. Recall, a fixed point is a state that is stationary under the influence of the dynamics. That is, it's a state that doesn't move. This is a fixed point of these dynamics. There are other fixed points in the dynamics of this system. For example, that's a different fixed point. That's theta 1 equals 2 pi and theta 2 equals omega 1 equals omega 2 equals 0. Now, is this fixed point stable or unstable? The test, does a perturbation shrink or grow? That perturbation shrinks. Stable fixed points, like this one, are attractors. They attract trajectories from initial conditions within their basins of attraction. There are also unstable fixed points in the double pendulum. How many? Well, three to start. Here's one. I have never gotten the device to balance at this point, 
but it is theoretically possible. If you were able to balance it here, as you can well imagine, any perturbation would rapidly grow. That's the test for instability. So this is an unstable fixed point. There's two others here. There's this one. And there's the one with theta 1 equals uh, pi and theta 2 equals 0. Unstable fixed points, by the way, are not attractors. Here's another demonstration, the driven damped pendulum. What are its state variables? Just theta and omega. This trajectory is converging to a fixed point at theta equals omega equals zero. The blue cable, by the way, goes to an optical encoder that measures theta. We'll play with some of this data in the time series analysis units later in this course. We also had a way to control the drive frequency, which is a bifurcation parameter for this device. At low frequencies, the fixed point at theta equals omega equals zero is stable, but if you raise that frequency, as we're showing here, a bifurcation happens and the fixed point becomes unstable. After that, what happens? It's a periodic orbit. It looks like a two-cycle to me. At other drive frequencies, the dynamics are chaotic, as we're showing here. Here's another fun thing. The inverted point, theta equals pi, omega equals zero, is normally an unstable fixed point. But at a high enough drive frequency, it actually stabilizes. So as you can see, all of these important concepts, which we first encountered in the context of maps, have direct analogs in the context of flows. In the next segment, we'll talk about the state space representation and build up a state space portrait of the pendulum.